And we're back with Heather Rath. I'm excited to see you. Hi. You know, I love having you on 843 TV because you do let us know what's going on in the community. And we're going to talk about nonprofits. Yeah, I mean, I really appreciate you saying that. And um, yeah, it's been a very interesting month on Hilton Head, to say the least, right? And um, when I was last on with you last month, we talked about how businesses were adapting kind of to this new normal. And so when I started thinking about what I was gonna talk with you about, I was like, you know who's really been adapting is nonprofits. They are crushing it online. And I love that they're being so creative and thoughtful in order to you know, sustain their programs that they value. And then also, you know, make make some money in this in this time when a lot of them are shut down, and also people are buying. Oh yes, and you know, in our community, we're supporting. Oh yes. So let me tell you what I'm calling it. I'm calling revenge against coronavirus bin shopping. I like that one. <laughs> I did it myself for Mother's Day. I went to like four different stores: Island Girl, Haskins, uh, Coastal Sunglasses, Birdie James, um, you know, Tatiana's place at Magnolia, and I just I I, I bought a lot of stuff. <laughs> Very good. Well, on your list, I know we have a lot to talk yeah, about. Yeah, let's we do. Down, so let's start off with the Art League. Yeah, so the Art League, they're doing a really interesting art auction on a daily basis. And I love, there's these little six by six pieces that um, a gentleman, I don't know him, but he's um, one of the Art League instructors. His name's Art Cornell. So he's created these really beautiful six by six pieces. There's lots of blues and greens in there. And you can go online and, and, and you know, and bid on them. And so I, I love that the Art League is, is doing that to kind of keep fresh local art top of mind. Right. Mitchellville. Oh my gosh, I love Mitchellville. They're doing story time at Griot's Corner every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, they're doing this through the end of the month and so it's a story time. It's great for the kids, for my boys, to go and learn about a piece of Mitchellville. And then, um, you know, you have to talk about the artist market at Honeyhorn, which was canceled. Yeah. Yeah. But Coastal Discovery Museum, not only are they keeping up doing their farmer's market still, which is great, and you can go out and, you know, kind of see people in the community and social distance, but still get fresh foods. But they're also doing their, um, their artist market online. So you can buy some of the most beautiful jewelry pieces oh my gosh really I, it, what kind of do you know what kind of mediums they're working on? Do, um so the ones that i'm it? looking at yeah the ones that i'm looking at is um very large stones in bracelets and in chunky necklaces i mean really really gorgeous stuff and um again all the money benefits coastal discovery museum at honeyhorn which of course we, we all love that too yeah yeah all right what else are we going on madame um <laughs> so uh, let's talk about the hilton head symphony orchestra they're doing their live streaming from sound waves um this coming up Monday they're doing Martin Lesh Trio at 7 30 oh. so if you've never seen Martin Lesh you have to log on and um, watch them online and just imagine sitting in your home opening up a bottle of wine listening to the Martin Lesh Trio you know you can stream it to your TV now we have all this ad adaptability so that's really cool and they're doing it at Soundwaves which is actually right across the and street. And website for that where can we find that information? Um, it's on the Hilton Head Symphony Orchestra website okay, and also sure. Culture HHI and speaking of Culture HHI oh my gosh we We've been doing a really fun series. Um, I've actually helped coordinate it, so I'm excited about this. It's called Culture and Culinary. Have you seen this? Not yet, but do tell. I'd oh like my gosh, so we are featuring chefs of the low country that in their kitchens preparing their food and Jevin Daly is the host. So Jevin hosts it, and then we get with these chefs. So we did one with Dave Peck from Low Country Backyard. We did one with Amy from Skillets. We did one with Erica from The Sandbar, and the entire Palmetto Breeze trolley fleet drove by when we were filming it, and they were all honking their horns. So, I mean, it's just been a really fun way to showcase our chefs in the Low Country. I love that. Yeah. I mean, again, you know, it brings us to where they are in their life, and it, they're still cooking, and they're still sharing. And absolutely, absolutely. And even with the restaurants reopening, we're gonna continue this program because it's wonderful to look at you get a sneak peek into the chefs of the low country and you know there's so much that ties in culture and culinary obviously between you know fresh shrimp and fresh fish and you know pork um you know and all of that good stuff greens all that well good people stuff. always like to know something what to cook they want a recipe they want to learn yeah. i mean that's one thing we're all foodies and we all would like to learn to, to be able to sh be a chef one day yeah so. absolutely very nice and what else is on our agenda oh my gosh so um heritage library they've been doing a lot of online resources for yes. teachers and they've been doing quite a bit and they're actually going to start their tours up in june 
So that's exciting. They're going to socially distance at their tours and mm -hmm. they're going to limit the amount of groups, but they feel like now is a good time for them to start their tours. They're all outdoors. Um, and so they're going to be starting the Zion tours, the Haunted History Tales, and then also um, their Fort Mitchell tours. Um, and then First Tee, um, they also have built online classrooms for their students to still continue learning their nine core values and the life lessons that First Tee cares about, right. but, uh, and to also make sure that the students are still engaged. And then the students can do some golf on their own, either at the facility or if they have another course they can play at. But the First Tee is also going to be starting their summer camps and classes in June as well. So, you know, we're kind of coming out of this online and shifting into real time but I think that the online is here to stay. I think so too. You know, you have kids, and so you're yeah. part of you know the school shutdown, yes. and you're part of trying to get your children to be you know engaged with education. And I think yes. that's kind of hard. And it's just nice to know that our community continues to support that 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 population there. The kids need to learn and grow and, and... And listen and learn new things. So for instance, like the Art League, they're doing classes online where you can learn a new medium, right? Whether it's linear drawing or, or oil painting. Um, Bow Art is doing an entire streaming series where they're pairing, pairing a artist and a musician together. So that's really fun too. I love it. Well, as always, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, please be careful social distancing. We want to remember that, but enjoy our community. We're at Caligny today. Um, enjoy our beautiful island and we'll be right back with more A43 TV where communities come to speak. <laughs>